What do you to experience do you know not to mess with? Water, rivers, current. I'm a fairly good swimmer, and I wanted to swim in a river where the current seemed really tame. Boy, was I wrong. Just small moving body of water dragged my poor body like a leaf in the wind. Paracetamol. In one of the dumbest moments of my life, I misread 50 milligrams when it was 500 milligrams. Took far too much. Long story short, almost a week in hospital. Intuition. If something feels wrong, stop. It doesn't matter if it's stepping out onto a snow-covered slope, pulling up to a sketchy gas station, or putting too small of a piece of wood in a table router. Listen when your brain tells you, this is a bad idea. Heat. Your sanity is the first thing to go in heat stroke. You aren't even aware anything is wrong. You just know you're pissed. There's a weird buzzing sensation in your head chest, and the world doesn't feel right. And then you're a zombie looking for anything to cool off with, and shortly after that, you're unconscious. It escalated too quickly for half a dozen rational adults to notice before exhaustion set in. Heat will kill you quicker than you think. If someone at work tries to badmouth someone else and they ask you about what you think about that person, just keep your mouth shut. Not immediately washing and disinfecting an open wound. Fridays. In the IT world, we call it read-only Friday. Don't change anything. Precipitation when it is cold outside. I got caught in a snowstorm in Shenandoah National Park in March 2019. It was 50 in the valley, but I got two feet of snow on the top of the ridge. The forecast did not call for any precipitation that day. I was hiking on the Appalachian Trail and thought that a few flurries were nothing to worry about. I left a lean-to shelter that would have kept me dry and protected from the wind. I hiked less than six miles and was struggling to move forward because the snow was so deep. I was soaked to the bone, freezing cold and beginning to lose fine muscle control in my fingers. The trail followed the side of a ridge and was not providing me any flat spaces to set up a tent. I eventually found a clearing where some power lines crossed the trail and struggled to get my tent erected despite the loss of feeling in my fingers. Once my tent was set up, I got my sleeping pad and sleeping bag deployed, got out of my wet clothes and crawled into the bag for an hour to warm up. I didn't even have a cell signal where I could let someone know my exact location and that I was okay. I had been in contact the previous evening, so my girlfriend knew my location to within a couple of miles. The snowstorm lasted all night, and I had to spend a full 24 hours in the tent before the snow stopped. The next day after the snow stopped, I packed up my camp and kept hiking through the two feet of snow. The trail crossed Skyline Drive after a short distance and I followed that road for approximately 9 miles to the nearest park entrance. I called a shuttle and spent the night in Waynesboro, Virginia at a hiker hostel. The warm shower, boot dryer, and warm food were exquisite. When you make an error in judgment in the wilderness, the goal is to survive long enough to learn from your mistake. I learned my lesson. I will not screw around when dealing with precipitation and cold weather. If there is any doubt, I will just hunker down and wait for the wet weather to pass enraged drivers. When someone follows you in traffic and or antagonizes you for whatever stupid reason, don't think you can handle it on your own and don't wait for them to leave you alone. Call the police and let them handle it. And for the love of all that is holy, don't do anything back to piss them off even more. Ladders. I worked in an ER at a major trauma center and the number of otherwise healthy people who came in paralyzed or soon to be dead from falling off ladders was eye-opening. Drowsy driving, ETA. Back in 2015, I had an incident where I fell asleep behind the wheel. It was in mid-August, and I had fallen asleep on my way home from work after a 16-hour night shift because my job messed up the schedule. We couldn't work more than 12 in a single shift. All I remember is I was driving, Then I was waking up in a hospital four hours away from home. No clue where I was or what happened. I had suffered a major TBI and have been mentally different ever since. Had a pretty major concussion following the accident. It happened in the back roads of southern Idaho. And I was lucky to have come out of it with zero broken bones. Everyone at the hospital was saying I was lucky to have survived. There were witnesses who saw the whole wreck. A couple high schoolers on their lunch. I read the police report and witness statements. And according to them, my car rolled 6.5 times, ended wheels up, and I was partially ejected, laying half in and half out of the car through the window. 
My seatbelt buckle had broken as the car was coming to rest. Mandolins. The kitchen gadget's not instrument. My health. Getting older, you rediscover all those old hurts. When I was 20, I hyperextended both elbows playing volleyball. 15 years later, my elbows started aching in the winter. Also my teeth. It falls under health, but not everyone thinks about the dentist when they think about health. If you are reading this, please floss. It's a small thing that can make a huge difference later. Trust me. Never ever trust a trench or a hole over your shoulders deep. You will die a horrible death. Yes, at the beach, too. Trusting people's blinkers to mean they are turning. Meth. Ruined my life for a while and I had to fight tooth and nail to get it back. 18 months clean. For real, when you hear not to try meth, not even once, heed that warning. Concerts. Ear protection is massively underestimated and the ear damage is permanent. Chickens while there are chicks present. My brother is a cruel little shit who liked being mean to animals while we were kids. He liked hurting them for the feeling of power it gave him. So he hurt a lot of small wildlife, like frogs and garter snakes and mice. When that stopped being enough, he decided to go after livestock. We had chickens. There was a great big rooster, and his ladies and all of them had chicks. My job was to take care of the chickens, feed, water them, collect eggs, etc. My brother was bigger and stronger than me, so one day he decided to have fun and grabbed up one of the little chicks in the coop and squeezed it until it started to scream for help. My attempts to stop him did nothing. Now the chickens were used to me picking up the chicks and petting them, so they weren't alarmed when my brother picked up the chick. When it screamed, however, all hell broke loose. All the chickens went after him, going for his face and eyes. The rooster had spurs on his legs, over an inch long, and he cut big grooves on my brother's face, missing his eyes by millimeters. They swarmed him and bullied him until he dropped the chick and ran out of the coop crying with blood on his face. He was ten at the time and should have known better. Did he stop being mean to animals? No. Did they punish him for it when they could? The animals sure did. Chickens are very much like the cuckoos in the Zelda games. If you hurt one, they will all swarm you. Boulders covered with algae and mountain creeks do not equal water slides. Waves. Newbie body surfer misjudged a six-foot wave and nearly drowned. Head injuries. I had a single friend that got into a barroom scuffle. He got knocked down and hit his on a tiled floor. Got back up and said that's it for tonight. He lived alone and that was on a Friday night. When he didn't show for work on Monday with a no call, that raised some eyebrows. When he didn't show on Tuesday, someone went out to his place and broke in after no answer. He was dead on the kitchen floor. Doctor guessed a brain bleed. I think about him every time I see a video of someone getting knocked out. Aggressive drivers. Just let them go. Cows. Grew up on a cattle farm. They can run faster than you think and can hit you so hard that you fly out of your shoes. Mental health. Take care of your emotional state, ladies and gents. Don't let go of yourself. It's never too late to get help. Living in misery actually isn't normal. Sometimes we just need a bit of help to get to a better place. A commercial dishwasher that has tape over the power button. I time travel to the other side of the room. The HR frequent flyer. It doesn't matter if you didn't do anything wrong. They will still make your work life unbearably annoying if you dare upset them. Garage door springs. Pay a professional to mess with that shit. Cat bites. I love cats, but got bit by one once. Spent three days in the hospital and there were talks of amputating two of my fingers and maybe half of another finger. Had intense IV antibiotics and came out fine but was scary for a couple days. Being careless in the shower. A few years ago, I was showering and I forgot the new bottle of conditioner sitting in the counter. I slipped on some shampoo residue in a rush to get out of the shower, because no likey cold air. I slammed my ribs against the porcelain tub, completely knocked the wind out of me, but I somehow managed to crawl out of the shower and bathroom to make it to my phone, genuinely thinking I would have to call an ambulance to take my naked ass to the hospital. Thankfully that wasn't necessary as I laid down and caught my breath, but I had pretty bad rib pain for at least a month after, and only a tiny bruise to show for it. After that experience, I could absolutely see how falling in the shower can kill a person.
Anyway, now I don't rush when exiting the shower, and I always bring my phone in the bathroom because that naked, wet crawl on the floor to retrieve it was humiliating, and I'd rather not go through it again. Stairs. They are deadly as hell. Those motherfuckers will kill you. Use guardrails. My 68-year-old dad lives on the third floor of an apartment complex, and I am terrified he's going to fall. I have fallen down my stairs, and my husband fell down while holding our newborn. Don't mess around going downstairs. Bed bugs. You can't treat those motherfuckers by yourself. You need a professional to treat that shit. Nap time. I teach swim lessons, so I'm often with the toddler and preschool set. One of the first questions I ask now when arranging a meeting time is whether the kid still naps. Yes, great. We're gonna avoid that time in like 30 minutes before and after it. Trust.